hello what's up everyone welcome back to my channel now today i'll be showing you how i make these delicious gizada so guys without further hesitation let's jump straight into the video so here i have some all-purpose flour i have some salt and to this i'm gonna add a little bit of sugar and i'm gonna add some shortening but guys if you don't have shortening butter is okay or margarine it doesn't really matter as long as you have one of these fatty content to work with so i'm just gonna go ahead and use my fingertips to incorporate the shortening into the flour and combine everything Now I'm just going to go ahead and use some ice cold water and allow the dough to come together. Now we are looking for a soft dough. We don't want it too sticky but we don't want it too hard. We want it right in the middle. And of course shortening does not freeze guys. So we're just going to use some ice cold water to like help it to come together. And as I said before you could use butter or margarine. Anything you have on hand that works fine. Now that my dough is nice and come together, I'm just going to place this in some plastic wrap and place this in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes or until I'm ready to use it. I just want to make sure the dough is nice and chill so when we are using it, it doesn't get too tacky. Now on to the next step. Here I'm going to have really um, peel and shell my coconut and i'm gonna grate this now i'm using the fine side of the grater to grate my coconut of course your desired texture is up to you you could use the other side if you mind and guys um in my opinion freshly grated coconut is best for this particular recipe but if you want to try with um pre-shredded coconut go ahead and do so but i doubt you would get the same texture and consistency as if you were using fresh coconut so fresh coconut is highly recommended so to my saucepan i'm just going to go in with some sugar now you could sweeten to this desired sweetness that you want but i will leave a measurement down in the description box for this particular one and i'm going to go in with some water Now to this, I'm just going to go ahead and add my um, grated coconut. Now guys, we're just going to cook this for a little bit. We don't want it to cook too much. We're just going to allow some of the liquid to evaporate out and all the flavors combine together. Now I'm going to go ahead and go in with some flavoring. So here I'm adding ground ginger. But if you have fresh ginger, go ahead and use that. I'm going to add some nutmeg. some cinnamon powder some vanilla flavoring and a pinch of salt just to balance out all that sweetness and allowing all the flavors to come through and I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a mix and bring it to a light simmer We don't really want to cook this for long we just want to allow it to come to a little simmer as i mentioned before and allow some of the liquid to evaporate and it get nice and juicy because if we make this too dry once the gizada is baked we will end up with a dry gizada we, we want it to be nice and juicy Now this is the consistency we are looking for so I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the heat and allow this to cool down before I start rolling out my gizadas because I do not want to work with hot products. Now we're going to go ahead and roll out our pastry dough. Now 
now personally i don't like my gizada dough to be too thick so i'm just going to roll this out to the thickness i like which is about i don't know thin <laughs> so guys yeah i'm just going to roll this out to um in a very thin layer not too thin where it is um as it tears but as i cut it you will see how thin i roll this out Now I'm just going to use this um, glass to cut it out. Of course, you could cut it however big or however small you like or whatever desired shape you have at home and want to use. You could go ahead and use it. But I like mine nice and neat. So this is the size I'm working with today. I'm just gonna put these scraps back together because I will roll this out again and make some more but I won't be filming that part so I'll just place this back in the refrigerator I'm just gonna move this out the way so I have more um, surface to work with now I'm just gonna go ahead and use my rolling pin just to get a little bit more surface because once I'm finished crimping I want to end up with the same um, size that I had cut it out earlier so that little rolling is just to create an extra little bit of surface for the pinching now guys I don't really know how to explain but you want to take your index finger and your thumb and hold and then use your index finger to push through and pinch i don't know if what i just said made some sense but just look and see um what i'm doing here so you could do as i do and then we're gonna um, place these on a lined baking sheet with parchment paper so i'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the rest of these i'm just gonna show you how i do one more and then i'm just gonna do the rest off camera so as I said before, you push and pinch. I slowed it down a little bit so you guys could see exactly what I'm doing. Now if you can't do this, it takes a little bit of practice, but hey, this doesn't have to be perfect. Just go ahead and have fun with it and do what you can. Now that these are all done, I'm just going to go ahead and take a fork and prick some holes into the dough. This is to prevent it from puffing up while baking because of the fat content in the dough, it will tend to puff up. So this step is to ensure that it doesn't puff up and you get um, your packet in between. Now I'm going to go ahead and start filling these up. Now you don't want to fill them too much. I made that mistake before. You just want to add about a tablespoon or so in each or to your desire. Depending on the size that you choose, rather, you add enough to fill it up. But you don't want to add too much. And I'm just going to go ahead, fill these up. And I'm going to bake these in a 350 degree oven for about 18 to 20 minutes, guys. We just want to get the dough to cook because the dough is super thin it doesn't really take a long time to cook and the filling is already cooked so about 15 to 20 minutes will do and guys you want to keep an eye on this because some oven is hotter than some you want to keep checking at about the 15 minute mark to see if you have reached your desired doneness i'm just going to bake these off roll out the rest of the dough and make some more
now my gizadas are all done and this is what it's looking like guys these were so 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 tasty and guys if you have reached this far in the video and you haven't yet subscribed go ahead and click the red subscription button and turn on the post notification bell so you never miss any of my future uploads and if you like this video give it a big thumbs up and also leave me a comment down in the comment section telling me what you think about this recipe that's it my beautiful people i thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next one have a good day and bye for now